In this lecture, we are going to discuss reference power state design and schematic for back and boost converter. And part of this lecture will also continue in the next uh, lecture. So, we will first talk about basics of power state inductors and their type of coil, basics of power state capacitor, and types and packages of power state capacitor. So, we will start with our complete state setup because we will be talking about what are the component and schematic that we have used in our power state. So, this is a typical buck converter and we are talking about this power state circuit and where we will be talking about the inductor. So, this is the inductor and we have considered power state capacitors. So, those capacitors are also there input side and output side, the output side capacitor. So, now in this lecture, we will first take the inductor. So, if you talk about inductor, you know we know about the inductor BH characteristics and we are trying to because we can define the inductance. What is the value definition of inductance? It is nothing but the flux change by the current change. So, that is the proportionality factor that means inductance is proportional to the flux change by current change. So, as long as we are in the linear region of the BH curve then inductance will be constant. But if you enter into nonlinear region that means if you go into this BH curve, suppose you know if we if we talk about this kind of region, so where your flux change will be less, but current change will be more, so the inductance value will reduce. So here we are not considering the hysteresis loop for the time being, but if we consider hysteresis, there are other effects also. So I am just first talking about the linear region where we want to operate our DC DC converter. Okay. So, next the magnetic flux all this expression the scaling factor this makes sense in the linear region in the phi equal to b into a because in the linear region we can draw the equivalent magnetic circuit. But when you go into nonlinear region then we have to consider the other factors also. So, then if we go by Faraday's law you know how this LDIDD that means the voltage across inductors is developed and it comes from the change in flux. And these are the all basic formula the how to decide inductor. So, that means you have to take the cross sectional area number of turns of the winding because you want to uh, that wrap that wire particular conducting wire on top of a uh, core that means whether it is an air core inductor or ferrite core inductor. So, there are different type of inductor. So, here L is the length of the magnetic circuit, I is the current through the coil, N number of turns, L is the inductance. The permeability of the inductance, these are the all basic magnetic circuit. We know that permeability is analogous to electric resistance and this permeability described as a magnetic conducting. That means, if the permeability is high, then what will happen? Whether you will it pass more number of lines of force for a given area cross sectional area or not that we can we know all this. So, it depends on the magnetic field strain frequency of operation because if you are operating at a higher frequency then the core losses may increase that means your some of the magnetic like a hysteresis loss you know eddy current loss they are frequency dependent. So, that loss can go up. If the rise of the temperature increases then the core material very much matters in terms of permeability. <coughs> so, relative permeability <coughs> that means the core can be iron powder coat and that is typically used for low frequency up to 400 kilohertz. Even for our traditional uh, that means ferrite core we use the iron powder coat where we will go up to you know the inductance value can be in, in the the perme relative permeability in the order of 50 to 150 and we can effectively operate 100 kilohertz or few hundred kilohertz. If you use a zinc core then you know we can go for high frequency the nickel zinc we can go for 
even much higher switching frequency. So, that means we have to be very careful about the core material in order to operate the converter at a higher switching frequency. Now, the type of inductor that can be air core coil okay, and these are used in RF circuits, then it can be choke coil with our iron powder or ferrite core and this can be this is a choke coil or it can be toroidal core coil. So, we often use uh, you know this first two cores for our power inductor. Then rod core coil assembly type shielded type. So, if you go for assembly type surface mount type then it can be shielded for better EMI and this is what we are using in our cores shielded type. Then semi shielded or it can be unshielded in this training kit we are using shielded core that means with the inductance value of 1 micro Henry DC are around 3 milli ohm and we are rated current is 14.5 so that means around 14 ampere current. So, this is the code that we have selected. Now, if you go to the capacitor we know the capacitor can be film capacitor or it can be aluminum electrolyte capacitor this is a very common capacitor or it can be tantalum capacitor. So, these are bit expensive, but all these are SMD, this is SMD type, this is through hole, you know, and this aluminum capacitor here is uh, you know through hole, but it can be SMD also. Now, we want to understand the some basics of capacitor. So, I want to pose some question. Any capacitor you take, the capacitor has two plate, conducting plate, and in between there will be dielectric, okay. So, there are different type of dielectric material, but any capacitor where you choose, we have to choose two things. One, we decide the value of the, what is the voltage rating of the capacitor and what is the capacitance value we are going to take. So, this gives us this formula, the capacitance value is nothing but your charge storage divided by the voltage. That means, C into V equal to Q. So, the question is, if we are want to select let us say we want to select 47 micro farad capacitor. Then I want to ask you once you want to select 47 micro farad capacitor the next question will immediately come. What is the voltage rating of the capacitor? That means what will happen the same capacitor if we go for let us say 20 volt rating or if we go for 100 volt rating will it be same in size? Then there is no need of voltage rating. So, for the same capacitor value if the voltage rating increases what will happen? So, these are the question lower capacitance versus higher capacitance that will come that means if the voltage increases then as per this formula the Q will increase. So, it is like a bucket of water ok. So, that means this charge will that means what is the storage capacitor of the capacitor. So, for the same capacitance value if you go for a higher voltage rating that means it has to store more charge as a result the size of the capacitor will increase. But if you go for a lower voltage then the storage charge requirement will be small and the size of the capacitor will be smaller. That means for the same capacitance value higher voltage capacitor sizes will be larger than the smaller voltage capacitor. Now for the same voltage rating that means I say my voltage rating is 100 volt. The next question what will happen for a smaller cap and the larger cap? One is the 20 microfarad versus 100 microfarad. So, naturally again it will come C into V charge will increase. So, a larger capacitor value will have a larger size for the same voltage rating because the Q will increase. So, you can answer this question the lower capacitance versus higher capacitance at the same voltage. So, this will be a larger size the second case will be the largest size. Similarly, for the same capacitance higher voltage it will also give rise to the larger size. So, you have to be very careful about the selection of the capacitor. Typically for the conservative choice if the peak voltage is 20 volt we typically take 50 volt capacitor or so. So, we have to give some safe margin. Type of capacitor the capacitor can be fixed type variable type. In the variable type it can be rotary cap, trimming capacitor, 
in the fixed type it can be film capacitor, ceramic capacitor, electrolyte capacitor, super capacitor, then there are other capacitors also. So, we generally use ceramic capacitor is a low permittivity, permittivity and these capacitors are often used in parallel with the larger electrolyte capacitor and that is used to reduce the ESR effect okay and these capacitor are supposed to absorb high frequency component. The film capacitor can be metallic film, metallization and you know there are paper or plastic type. Then electrolyte capacitor can be aluminum electrolyte, tantalum capacitor and then niobium electrolyte capacitor. So, there are different type, it depends on the cost, size, package and these things are important because when you are going for high frequency, high power density, then what type of capacitor package should we use, those are very important. Different package, so this is a multi layer ceramic capacitor and these capacitors are very much used in high frequency DC DC converter. Available SMD package, it can be 1210, 1206, 0805 package, 0603, 0402, etc. And we need to check the DC bias characteristics. So, capacitor reduces with applied DC voltage, that means if you apply a large DC voltage, the capacitor voltage can reduce. So, you have to take that into account. So, in this teaching kit, we have considered input side and output side cap. So, we have considered multiple cap in parallel, that is a common trend. We have taken 10, micro, 10 milli microfarad uh, multi layer capacitor and 1 microfarad. So, these are 1 to 1 0 package, that means they are higher storage capacity and 1 microfarad 0805 package used in parallel. So, this parallel is used to reduce the ESR effect and to absorb the high frequency noise. So, in summary we have discussed basics of power stage inductors and capacitor, we have discussed basic power stage capacitor and some aspect of power stage packages, different packages. In the next lecture we will continue with the driver circuit as well as the current sense circuit and some aspect of the schematic of the power stage for this reference kit that means the training kit. That is it for today, thank you very much.